A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway prairie tank. Part 18. Aligning the parts and getting ready to make the superheater element. I noticed that when I fitted the wet header, the gasket that was between the wet header and the boiler was destroyed in the process. I think it's time to remove the wet header and clean off the gasket, then refit it. This is how I'm getting the wet header out of the boiler. A couple of old studs into the threaded holes, and then I'm using a large screwdriver as a lever. A warning on this one, do not use brass studs or brass bolts because they will shear off. As you can see in this clip, the gasket is uh, not serviceable in the slightest. I only fitted this gasket in the first place for the hydraulic test. But now it's no longer needed and it's damaged anyway, it's time for it to go. I'm cleaning off the residue using a chisel. And I'm going to fit the dual threaded wet header bush back in place using some Loctite 542. Generally speaking, over the years I've used Loctite 542 on any threaded steam joint. I've always found it to be very successful with no problems whatsoever. Loctite 542 is not to be confused with Loctite 601 or 603. Loctite 542 is a hydraulic thread sealant. Another good thing about using Loctite is before it cures, as you tighten the part in place, it acts as a lubricant so you can get the part quite tight. I was a bit concerned about the state of the stud on the left, so I fitted another one. I didn't want to shear it off. These are some old 2BA studs, and I've had a box full of these for many years. They're made of quite strong steel, so I don't think they're going to shear off. And here we go again, yet another happy accident. Now the gasket isn't in between this part and the boiler, I can rotate it slightly more, and the hole in the wet header is now in the perfect position to feed the superheater that will go down the superheater flue. It is very important to make sure that the feed to the cylinders isn't restricted in any way. I'm going to be using 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe, all the way from the wet header, down the superheater flue and back again, all the way to the steam pipe on the T-piece that feeds the steam chests. When you see me running steam engines in the garden, just running them not under load, I use all sorts of pieces of pipe to connect them together. This is just from a convenience point of view, but in real terms, when you're piping something that's going to be doing work, especially a miniature locomotive, you need to make sure that you have plenty of steam available at the steam chests. The camera from this angle shows the outlet from the wet header being perfectly in line with the left hand side of the superheater element flue. The previous boiler fitted to this locomotive was a super simplex boiler with four superheater elements. This is a normal simplex boiler with just the one superheater flue. And looking at the boiler from the front, it's over the right hand side. So here I'm bending the inlet pipe to the steam chests over towards the right hand side to line it up with the flue. The other pipe remains vertical because that is the outlet pipe from the cylinders. On top of this is fitted the blast nozzle, which accelerates the speed of the exhaust going up the chimney, which in turn draws the fire. Here I'm making the final adjustment to set this pipe in the correct position. The position of the inlet pipe is now very close to where it needs to be. This blast nozzle is a bit unusually large. They're normally only this size when they have an integral blower but this hasn't, the blower is a separate ring that fits on top of it. In this clip using my scriber, I'm going to try and illustrate why the parts have been positioned as they are. One end of the superheater element that goes down the flue is connected to the steam inlet. The other end of the superheater connects to the wet header's output. And during the piping process, you have to remember to leave some space to get a flue brush in to clean the fire tubes. I'd move the position of the steam inlet a little bit too far to the right. With the boiler in the correct position, now I can realign it with the superheater flue. In a box full of old random pieces of copper pipe, I found this piece. And I use it to illustrate what the superheater pipe is going to look like. It will, however, be a lot longer than this and go all the way down the superheater flue, not through into the firebox, just right to the end, Then it's going to double back on itself and fasten to the wet header. When I refit the smoke box to the saddle, it's still touching the front pipe, so I do need to remove some metal from this area. Not much metal, nowhere near as much as I've marked using the felt tip pen. So how am I going to do this? I know, I'll use a file. Well, maybe that's not the best idea, because it does work, it works very well, but as it's very warm in the workshop today, it's making me hot. 
I know I'll try the grinder in the drill method. This also works but takes a while. There's one method that you must not use. Although it seems in principle to be a good idea, it is not a good idea at all. This is an end mill fitted into the drill and as you can see, it's a very dangerous thing to do. The bold red cross wipe that I've used at the beginning of this sequence is what I generally use to say, do not do this, under any circumstances, because it's very dangerous. You could of course use a drum sander, but preferably fitted with a much coarser drum than this. The small amount of work with the electric drill and the file enlarge the hole in the base of the smoke box, but I think I will elongate the hole a little bit more. I do not want the pipe to touch the smoke box at any point. When this job is completed there will be a specially shaped metal plate. This will fit around the two pipes and cover the hole in the smoke box. This metal plate will not touch the piping either. It will be quite close and held in place with a suitable sealant. There will be more about this later on in the series. For now I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.